Welcome to my workshop, OpenStack Client 101, Becoming a Command Line Power User. Today I show you what are your options to access your OpenStack Cloud, how to install and to configure the tools for that. So my name is Niels Magnus. I'm an architect for the Open Telecom Cloud at his systems. And I also do some community outreach uh, management. And that's why I'm talking uh, to you today about a selection of tools that we have for that. So let's start uh, with how to interact with your cloud. So first thing that comes uh, into mind if it gets to accessing a cloud is usually a web-based console, a browser-based console that runs uh, in your web browser. And this uh, most of the time looks like this. Also, you may have seen this uh, on the right hand side. This is the classic OpenStack Horizon dashboard. On the left hand side, we see a slight uh, variant from that. Um, uh, what we have here in the Open Telecom Cloud, but basically you get the idea. Um, there are several resources like servers, like um, um, volumes, like networks, and you create and manage those resources with your mouse in the browser. It is a very convenient and familiar um, Metatha for the actual resources. They are kind of a one-to-one -one mapping. But there is one fundamental uh, issue with this approach. It is not very easy to automate. So if you have ever tried to uh, script um, the mouse path or clicking on a specific item, especially on complex UIs, that is not uh, very convenient. That's why we have a number of different options, and I'd like to uh, discuss some of those options uh, with you. So the first and the most basic approach would be to call directly the API. So we have on the right hand side the cloud with an API, which is exposed to the internet and can be accessed through HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, to do that, we could facilitate a tool like curl, and I've put here an example, uh, a call to that, and uh, also the response. Uh, with that, we send a token uh, as a header, that's dash H, and uh, access just a URL with some endpoint URL and a version and, a, and an RP core. And that results in some data, which is um, usually in uh, our case in OpenStack environments in JSON format. So this is uh, an array of servers with their tenant ID, their addresses, and probably lots of additional um, uh, attributes as well. This is um, this uh, approach can be used all the time and in under any circumstances. But um, as you can see with the variables, there are a number of uh, pieces of uh, information that needs to be filled in. So first of all, the token, which is uh, some seemingly random string um, that verifies your identity, which you uh, get after your authentication. And the second thing is here, the endpoint, which needs to be determined because a classic OpenStack cloud um, comprises not just of a single API endpoint, but several of them because uh, each service has their own and they need to be figured. You can have different versions and so on and so on. So there are um, lots of questions uh, to deal with, um, like I just mentioned here. So should you use uh, a direct uh, API connectivity for your automation? Well, obviously you could uh, write a script that uh, facilitates the curl command and uh, that uh, accesses the raw APIs. 
but keep in mind that you have to do a lot of housekeeping like the authentication like um, the service discovery and so on so this is not a really realistic option unless you want to spend quite some time in uh, implementing that more convenience is provided by an sdk the OpenStack SDK is an official OpenStack project and maintained by the community. And it works uh, in between the uh, developer and the cloud itself. It directly talks to the APIs, but takes care of um, dealing with the data and uh, providing some programming language interface. In the case of the SDK, that's Python. And I provided here a short example script. We import the library. Um, we connect to a predefined uh, cloud in a configuration file. I get back to in a minute. And then we can just access the list of servers, iterate over it, and print it, for example. It's a very simple example. Well, this is a very powerful and generic approach, and it takes care already on uh, several uh, aspects like authentication, connection handling, the marshalling of data, and depacking, and so on. However, you need some, let's call it intermediate Python skills for that. So uh, to get that running, well, uh, there's a lot of documentation available online. Um, but uh, some background is certainly uh, helpful. Um, some some uh, remark uh, regarding the SDK. The SDK can be uh, extended. Uh, extended uh, if you have um, extra features in your cloud that uh, surpass um, the classic um, OpenStack API. I just briefly mentioned it because we have a couple of extra services like extra database services, for example, RDS is a database service. And um, the way how you access um, those extensions is just the same as with the classic SDK. Uh, you connect to it and then you have different um, objects for that resource objects uh, that can be accessed. More details you can find in the documentation. The nice thing, the plugin mechanism uh, checks um, automatically with any further ado um, if there are extensions uh, installed and um, everything else is taken care of by the SDK itself. Okay, so then let's have a look at uh, the current. Uh, situation that we have uh, in the OpenStack um, ecosystem. So, as you all know, there are several um, modules available, Nova for compute, Glance for image handling, and several others as well. And all these uh, modules provide APIs. And each API obviously needs a counterpart. And that's why uh, several uh, projects like the Nova project um, provide directly a tool that has the logic how to access it over the API um, has built in. So you get one binary more or less uh, directly maintained from the Nova project and there's everything inside. Other projects like the Glance project have factored out already um, the functionality from their tool uh, and they now use the functionality of image handling which is part of the SDK. That is um, a separation of concerns so that um, the team of uh, a glance just needs to provide information about the API handling that can be also done by the SDK itself and 
the glance client more or less just calls um, the appropriate parts in the library. That is a more scalable approach. Um, we have some problems uh, and issues with this approach because the different tools um, might have some slightly differing uh, semantics and features. Some have output formatting, some don't have uh, these features. Um, the UI is not really consistent and each tool is implemented individually uh, by the different um, teams of the um, modules and services. And that's why uh, a couple of years ago, um, the OpenStack client project, uh, or also called the uh, command line interface, was started. With that, we have one single command, OpenStack, and then um, as a first parameter, the service, like, or, or the, to be more precise, the, the resource, and then some kind of verb, what to do. This is typically one of the CRUD operations. So you could uh, um, invoke it as OpenStack server list or OpenStack image list or OpenStack network list and so on. It's not only um, the list command that is um, uh, available, but usually you have also um, verbs like show or delete and sometimes uh, depending on the resources obviously also modification options there's an extensive help function uh, built into the openstack command so please consult that so you could also uh, run something like openstack server dash dash help or openstack dash dash help and you will find specific uh, information about that. The CLI tool, the OpenStack client, um, is automatically aware of potential extensions and with those extensions it also extends the command itself. So um, to stick to the example that I mentioned earlier, uh, you could do something like uh, OpenStack RDS cluster list or something like that. The output looks like uh, I've uh, presented here in the gray box. Um, and you can also notice that there is already some formatting done here in those uh, ASCII art uh, boxes or tables. There are a couple of options for that though. Um, yeah, so to summarize the idea of uh, this uh, tool, so we have one tool for all services. It's very convenient that uh, it takes care of all the authentication and data transformation um, issues, which are shared by all uh, services. And uh, to achieve that, it relies on the SDK. To install, this project it's pretty forward if you are a little bit familiar needs only a little bit uh, uh, know how about python and what i recommend here is um, python virtual environment so you don't change anything uh, on your controller system you need some python free you need free packages uh, which I recommend that are uh, available on your system gcc as a c compiler um, the um, libraries and header files and the virtual environment, which is not installed by default and on all uh, Linux distributions. So obviously this is a, uh, this works directly out of the box on a, a recent Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, but should be um, available on most other distributions as well, slight modifications. Um, then I create a virtual environment named P3. I activate it and then you just have to install, in essence, uh, OpenStack client as the basic um, package from the PyPy repository. 
In my case, I also install the wheel and OTC extensions packages uh, because then everything gets compiled and it is a little bit faster. But those five steps done, you can issue OpenStack dash help and, and use that. Please keep in mind if you um, log out and log again, uh, log in again uh, after some time or another day uh, to reactivate um, uh, your virtual environment. So that means to reissue the command in step number four before you do any work, any further work with uh, OpenStack, because otherwise uh, it won't be in your path. If you want, you can do this directly in your startup scripts, bash RC or whatever you use. Yeah, that is uh, half of the story uh, installation. Uh, and next is authentication. Um, there are lots and lots of uh, configuration options um, for uh, the SDK and the, um, and the uh, OpenStack client. And they more or less fall into three categories, command line switches, environment variables, and configuration files, which, uh, from which I recommend uh, the latter, the configuration files. So, it's way easier to put everything in a single file uh, and uh, not have it on the command line because as you know, you can see um, your co-users uh, command line uh, options uh, with the PS command. You can even see environment variables on the same system. So especially if it comes to passwords and secrets, it's not a good idea to have them uh, in command line switches or environment variables, but to put it in configuration files. Um, the configuration files uh, have those long list of uh, potential keywords and attributes, as you can show here, but the minimal uh, requirements are listed here in the lower left-hand side. Um, with the cloud, you uh, give a name to an instance Username and password are quite obvious. Um, the domain uh, is necessary. A project might be necessary. And what is uh, necessary is um, a first authentication URL where the client uh, connects to uh, to figure out the actual um, service endpoints for the specific services. So typically, this is um, your keystone URL. Um, there are some extra parameters as well. Uh, I won't go into much detail here. Um, look up at um, the documentation. There are a couple of um, documentations and examples. Um, one important thing, uh, there's obviously a precedence. Uh, so if you have something in your configuration files, you can still uh, override it with the command line or the environment variables. Here I have a full example for a Cloud's YAML file. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, there is the, the actual uh, file. And you see, I have created two instances. Uh, the first instance uh, is called OTC, and the second is called My Project. And those are two different uh, accesses um, to my cloud, or could be even two different clouds, um, where I provide username, project name, uh, the domain name, and I also provide here a profile. A profile is a preset of exactly those um, configuration options, which is stored in a file um, called um, vendor.json. And uh, there are some uh, common, um, commonly shared um, attributes are passed there already, like the uh, authentication URL, which is always the same for all instances of one cloud provider. 
Another thing that you can personally factor out uh, are the credentials themselves. So you can have a second file optionally um, that has the same structure and has the secrets in it. And that should be in the same directory as the cloud's YAML file. You have three options uh, of the cloud's YAML file and the secure YAML file. Uh, the first is the local directory. That's obvious. Uh, the second is in your home directory in .config slash OpenStack. And for global use, you can also use etc OpenStack. So the local directory has obviously the highest precedence. Um, now, as we have uh, talked a lot about installation and configuration, uh, let's talk briefly about output. Um, you can select uh, parts of the data, you can choose the format, and you can also use some extra commands um, to uh, <coughs> pretty print uh, your output if that is necessary, especially if you get a lot of data back, like a list of all servers or, or network um, resources or something like that, then such a tool might come in handy. Let me give you an example how to select columns. As you've seen in a previous example, uh, there have been four columns. And if I just want to have two of them, I can uh, put in a selector dash C and select what I want here. Um, I can also change the output format. Um, so if I use the show command, I usually get way more attributes and it might be more convenient to have them in JSON format, uh, as you can see here. And especially if you have, uh, if you enable the um, JSON format, that then it makes sense to uh, pipe it through uh, JQ dash capitalize C dot, which means take the output, do some nice formatting. It's already indented here, um, but it also does some syntax highlighting and uh, the dot means um, select everything from the very top. Well, you can think of JQ being some kind of a, a grab command for structured data. Have a look at the documentation for that. Yeah, let's wrap up before uh, I go into some uh, live demo mode, if you want. Um, to summarize everything, the command line is a powerful tool that uh, helps you to automate uh, your processes, um, managing your cloud. I really re um, recommend to stick to the standards and not roll everything on your own. Stick to the SDK and the OpenStack client. Don't reinvent the whole wheel again. Uh, we've seen this several times. That's why I'm um, uh, stressing uh, this. Um, the installation is relatively easy. Once you get the hang of it, uh, it's just a combination of Python virtual environment and uh, a single pip invocation. And for the configuration, keep into mind uh, to write a proper Cloud's YAML file. And ah, you can select the different instances uh, with uh, uh, either a command line switch or uh, an environment variable so that you can easily switch from one Cloud setup to another. You can customize your output. And with all of that, I hope uh, you have learned now about a powerful tool and hope you have much fun and success with it. Thank you very much. Before I actually close, a very brief uh, hint on um, some competition we currently run uh, at uh, Open Telecom Cloud. Uh, there is the OpenStack scavenger hunt open until the end of the month. 
and uh, you have to answer 10 not so difficult questions about 10 years of OpenStack, visit some web pages, find some secret characters, and uh, with all that, you can win some cool um, gadgets. I think it's a, yeah, it's a photo drone and, uh, well, see if you want to participate on that. That said, thank you very much for your attention. And maybe there are questions or remarks for that. Yep. Bye-bye.